Hi, everybody. It's uh, yes, Vivarelli interviewing Rachel today. Hello, Rachel. Hi. Rachel, just for the viewers, tell them where you are. I'm in the Bay Area in California. Okay, cool. It's good to know where the Google pin is when we interview people. Yep. So we thought we would do a part two. I've interviewed you once before and you shared your wonderful, amazing story about your business and how it started and how creative it is and how you now work from home. So can you give us an update as to what's going to happen since we interviewed you last? Well, um, things are still going well. Um, I've gotten new stores. Um, actually one in Australia. Yeah. My first Australian store. Which one? So very, it's called Paper Republic. It's in, um, oh, yeah. yeah, I know it. It's, Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's in um, it's a town I never heard of. Yeah. Uh, Camberwell, I think, is the town. Um, Camber but yeah, that was exciting because I had up until this point not been in Australia or New Zealand, so that was exciting. Um, How many countries are you in now? Uh, U.S., Canada, and Australia. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good because, I mean, Australia's big and so is Canada and the U.S. Like, you're talking about two continents now. Yeah, I know. I'm really excited. So that's that was the goal of mine, so I hit that. Um, yeah. What else? Um, I've just been plugging away. I mean, the orders keep coming in. I've been designing new stuff. I've been feeling more creative. Um, <clears throat> my sales have been pretty much have gone up and then kind of stayed there. Yeah. Nice. Um, and that was after we talked before back in March, not on camera, but just you and me. Yeah. And um, since then it's been, it kind of went up and then just kind of like stayed kind of in that range. So that's been really exciting. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's been all good things. So yeah. Absolutely. And have you created some new products since we spoke to you last? I did. Um, I focused on wine labels. Um, yeah. I already had some up before, but I put a bunch more out for like baby showers and um, bridesmaids and birthdays and graduation, stuff like that. Yeah. And then like mailing stickers, which are like, you know, like a little sticker you put on like, like an envelope or yeah. a package, just like, like something cute, like you're awesome or that kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. So I put those up. Um, so yeah, just been focusing on growing and expanding. And um, I randomly, I actually, um, I, I got, I found someone to do PR for me for free. Yeah. Which is crazy. For free? So, randomly, somebody I used to work with in my old job reached out to me on Facebook about helping her with a project. And I said, you know, instead of paying me, what if we just do a barter? Yeah. He agreed. So I'm like, that's crazy because I've been wanting a PR rep for so long and then yeah, it just happened. And, but I didn't know how to pay for it. So it yeah. worked out. So Fabulous. that was a big manifestation. Yeah. Um, that's great. You mean PR yeah. to go to like other countries, that kind of thing? Like a publicist. So somebody who like email the magazines and the editors and try to get product placement or try to get an article or yeah. Something like that. Um, and here in the States, they're expensive. They're, you know, you're looking at at least $2,000 on the lower end a month for a wow. publicist times. They want you to sign on for a minimum of usually like four to six months. So you're looking like at a hefty chunk of change yeah. with no guarantee that it's going to amount to anything. Yeah. So I was hesitant. So when this opportunity presented itself, I was like, uh, this is great. This is free. I manifested this. That's so great. And it's yeah. like you said, it's like the bartering system. It's such a great way when you haven't got, I mean, you've got, obviously you're doing well, but everything you spend is, you know, a, a risk if you're doing stuff like that, that doesn't, you're not sure if it's going to give you a return. So what a perfect way to start. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then, uh, We'll, we'll see how it goes. So, yeah, I'm excited. Excited about that. So, yeah, that's what's been going on. 
it's nice how like when you we I interviewed you last time we were talking about how you got that warehouse the people to store your stuff for free as well because you were putting some of your sales or your manufacturing through them yes exactly I know I I feel like I'm good at kind of scoring freebies actually yeah, yeah. I should do a video on that oh and I started a YouTube channel too that's also what happens but, yeah yeah okay. um, tell us a bit about that what are you talking um, about on your channel well so I'm a writer as well so I've written about a bunch of different things usually things that are like funny I usually yeah. write a funny tone of voice yeah um and I kind of wanted to expand on that and so I thought, well, I didn't want to do a YouTube channel just stories because I didn't really think that would be appealing necessarily. So I thought, well, I can talk about law of attraction because I have experience with that and I do have some insane stories about that. So yeah. I thought I would start sharing that. So um, I shared one about a specific person I met. Yep. Um, this was a long time ago. Um, and I shared one about the time I manifested $10,000, which was crazy in like it was like in two weeks or something um and then like a bunch of other ones but yeah i try to share them in my voice which is more um i guess kind of like girly and a little bit like sometimes silly and i use a lot of slang so yeah it's been fun cool That's been good. well as we said prior to recording i'll we'll, we'll put your link down below i'm sure you know when people get to know you a little bit through your stories it's always nice to shoot off into their channels you know it's yeah good. definitely good yeah. that's so great that's just like more creative it's like it's just expanding and mushrooming yes. yeah yeah it's great to feel the creativity expand because that way the, the nice thing for me is not feeling like i have um all my eggs in one basket so to speak yeah it's nice to have a few eggs here a few eggs here a few eggs here yeah kind of all over the place and just you know yeah. let it let it flourish. So yeah, that's, that's exciting. I've been having fun doing that and like responding to the comments and yep. things like that. So yeah, it's been fun. And, and it's actually interesting because it's helpful for me because I learn more about myself in doing these things, these projects. I, I start to realize the things that I'm doing wrong and where I can improve as far as law of attraction is concerned, yeah. where we were talking about limiting beliefs before. You know, I sort of caught myself in, in one and I was like, oh, I need to change that. Like, what, how did, where did that come from? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I started to change that. So it's interesting because the, the YouTube channel has actually been teaching me just in the doing of it, which has been really cool. You learn so much about yourself when you do a YouTube channel. You learn a lot about how critical you are about yourself you learn a lot about just you know just your confidence you learn a lot about that whole replying to people what yeah what goes on there i mean it's just such a creative thing that google has created youtube and that we can you know you, there's so many weird and interesting and little niche people that do all sorts of odd things and you everyone's got their place that's what i love yeah it, it's kind of like a democratization of 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 information because yeah. you know before you could only get your information from selected sources that have been yeah. sanctioned by a pub, book publisher or um tv, or TV cable a network network that's what i'm trying to say yeah but now it's anybody can put out the information and it's great because that's how i've discovered abraham hicks yep which helped me get past the secret because i had watched the secret like 50 times and was kind of like all right we need some more information yep. here yeah and i gone to the bookstore and you know the bookstore that there was it was limited i i'm sure i mean yeah was, even now i feel like it's pretty limited if i go to a barnes and noble it's like there's some books, but I found that YouTube, listening to all these different um, teachers, mm. really expanded yeah. my horizon, especially because you can type in your exact question, Yep. and somebody has an answer for it. Exactly. And Which usually maybe even 10 or 20 people have got an answer for it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And, and the thing is, I remember too, when I didn't have YouTube and I was going to bookshops and I was buying books, 
if you buy the book, you get it home and then you go, oh, you know, I didn't really like that. You still pay yeah. for it. Whereas right. here, you get on YouTube, you go, oh, I don't like that YouTube or I don't like what they're talking about. That's not really what I was after. You just log off and get onto another one. It's only cost you your time. That's it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I like that too. And it's like, I can watch it while I'm a, uh, or listen while I'm like cleaning the house or, you know, yeah, doing whatever. So yeah, you can multitask as well. And, um, Yep. So yeah, it's been great because I've been able to really get specific about like different topics. And there was one video I was listening to that the guy had a very, he had some similar stuff as I did. Yeah. And like, oh, bingo. I'm like, yes, this answers my question. I was like so excited to hear it. Yeah. Because it's literally my thing. Yeah. Um, Because the mechanics are hard sometimes. Yep. Of law of attraction. Yeah. And when you're hearing lots of different people saying lots of different things, like for example, a lot of people that do law of attraction on YouTube say you can't manifest a specific person. Right. And there's other people that say you can, and then you think, well, which one's right? So you get right. kind of, you know, confused. Right. Well, I mean, people obviously have. Yes. So, 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 yeah. But the yeah. thing is, if people say that you can't, they never will. It'll never happen right. to them. <laughs> right exactly that reflects their beliefs so yeah it, right. it really is a the beliefs trump everything beliefs trump everything it is yeah is the magnet that brings everything in so yeah you got to look at do i really want to believe this or that does that serve me or does that just make me feel terrible so right yeah beliefs, yeah they really do trump everything i think that's i mean you could make all the vision boards you want you can say the affirmations but if you don't feel it and believe it yeah you're really just wasting your time yep. and then you're gonna say why isn't this working yeah so it really has to be like a like a, like a full like mental makeover yeah you really have to believe it and like a little simple example um my friend uh who when she was dating would always be like Oh, these guys, they never, they always are so cheap and they always like offer to, they always want to split the bill with me and blah, 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 and that kind of thing. Or they expect me to pay for it. She's like, I've just never met a guy. She's like, it's hard to find a guy who just wants to like treat me. And um, I was like, oh, that's funny because I've never encountered that. I literally was like, I've literally never encountered that ever when dating. I, yeah. Though, like, I've offered many times to split the bill. Yep. And they never take me up on it. Yeah. I mean, I like, yeah, almost never. And I thought that's funny because that is a belief. Yeah. Because I just assume that the guy is going to pay, even though I offer, I assume he's going to want to pay for it. And then he does. And then he does. So I just think it's funny because we were living in the same city at the time in New York. So I'm like, <laughs> you know, we're well, staying in the same the dating York, The city, it's not the men, it's the belief system. Yeah. That's a good example, yeah. actually. Yeah, it, it is, because it kind of dawned on me. And I have, there was, like, one other one, um, maybe not quite a belief system, but more um, how your vibe affects your surroundings. So in a similar vein, um, I had a friend, and we, would, we were cocktail waitresses together a while ago, like, after college. And... Um, the, like usually waiters split up rooms like you have this section these five tables and you have these five tables for me. but it was a nightclub and there weren't really any tables so our boss was like just split the room in half you take the left side you take the right side split the tips at the end just pull it so it's fair yeah I swear to god every single time we would work together she would make more money than me it never made sense sometimes she had the left sometimes she had the right she like <laughs> every time and we were wearing um you know board like a black uniform um you know she is we're both i would say probably equally attractive it wasn't like yeah you know like just the, the the what i'm trying to say is the playing field was pretty even yep um and every single time and she wasn't even like a the kind of girl who likes being in a nightclub she's like a homebody she likes to sit home and like read like, yeah. it was still not even her environment. <laughs> but the difference was that I would go out there and be like, these people better tip me. 
because I'm working hard and blah, blah, blah. like I was a little bit bitchy back then. <laughs> I was like, I deserve this, you know, um, but not like in a positive way, in a very like, you were supposed to pay me. Yeah. When she did not have that attitude, she kind of went out and just happy go lucky, just happy to do her job, make her money, go home. And she wasn't, she didn't have a chip, she didn't have a chip on her shoulder, which I did. And I remember thinking, like, there was no, like, I didn't consciously think, oh, this is law of attraction, because I wasn't aware of it at the time. Yeah. But I thought, okay, something's happening. <laughs> and I'm like, huh, does it have something to do with the fact that she has a better attitude? Hmm. Um, so I tried to improve my attitude. Um, but waiting tables was clearly not for me anyway, so... <laughs> But it was, it was yeah. an interesting lesson in, you know, yeah. what goes here. For sure. For sure. Because people really respond to you because it's such direct contact customer service. Yeah. 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 That, yeah. Wasn't, that wasn't my job either. I was not a good waitress. I was grumpy and miserable. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, I would keep up a good front. I would always be like, hi, how are you? Yeah. It's best. But, yeah. But in my head... I was like, you better pay me. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that's a good looking back with hindsight. It's good when you can learn the lesson after it's happened as to what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of remembering to keep that going on a daily basis. With what you're doing today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's almost like. I need to put like a little to-do list on my wall or something yep. like, yeah. you know, be positive or, or have like one of those bracelets that you like snap at yourself when you <laughs> have a negative thoughts or rubber band or whatever. Yes. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be good. And then all of a sudden, like a, it's like the, the vestige of the old me will come up and be like, you know, you're stupid or like, yeah, how are you going to pay for that? Or, and I have to literally go, nope, no, yeah. no. Stop, stop what you're doing. Yeah. Um, do you, do you find because you're working at home, obviously because, you know, like me, you're on the computer a lot, do you find you have to literally take breaks, go right away from the computer, go for a walk, go and eat your lunch, or just, just remove yourself when your vibe starts to crash and burn? Well, what I do is I, um, well, I will either take a break and I have a little balcony, so, and it's pretty warm here, generally speaking, or sunny. Yeah. So I'll go on the balcony and maybe, like, read a little bit. Yeah. Another thing I, I do even more than that is I, um, I'll just, like, switch my music. I'll put on some music, because I'll be, like, I love times I just have it on shuffle, so if I have it on shuffle, there might be, like, some sad song that comes up. So what I'll do is I'll find something that I'm, like, well, no, will put me in a happy mood. Yeah. right away like some yeah. band some artist and i'll put on and i'll just listen to that and i'll just you know start like dancing or i'll like to myself i mean there's nobody here but yeah. um just to put myself back in that good feeling mood or i'll even put um i'll put a concert on the tv like from youtube i'll stream it yeah. to the tv so i kind of have like a live concert going on while i'm working yep um yeah because music always puts me in a good mood yeah. It always gets my vibe up, and yep. it's an easy, cheap fix. Yep. So that that's my trick for yeah for getting out of it. Um, and it works every time. It does. Much. It does. Yeah. I agree. And yeah. and you can do it within seconds. You put it on, and within five, ten seconds, you can feel yourself coming back up. It's great. Exactly. Oh, so great. Or or I might um, I'll text a, like a friend something funny. And we'll laugh about it. Well, like a funny video on YouTube or. Yep. Um, I have, a, there's this show, it's an American show and it's an old show, but it's called Crank Yankers and it's these puppets and they make prank phone calls. Yeah. It's a really old show, but like every now and then, like if I'm really like in a mood, I'll put on one of the old episodes and it's the funniest thing. Like they're making these prank phone calls and they're so ridiculous, but it's like, it's five minutes, but I've laughed so hard. You know, I'm backed up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm laughing thinking about it. They're That's so funny. Great. Yeah, comedy yeah. and music. 
definitely a good way yeah. to change your space quickly without well, it's almost like it does it for you. You don't have to go, okay, I need to think positive thoughts because I'm feeling negative and you have to go through that routine. Exactly. It's a good way to do it with effortless ease through it, yeah. listening. Yeah. No, that's good. That's a good reminder, actually. Yeah. So um, what, is there any other things you want to, like, what's, what else is going on? Are you, you want to talk more about your business or you, you share whatever you want to share, Rachel? Sure. Um, well, actually, you know what? I had um, an interesting, I have an interesting story that I was actually going to, I want to eventually record myself, but I, I think I can share some of it here because I think it's so, it's so crazy. And I think um, it's a good example for people. Yeah. Also related to business. Um, but I, I used to have a full-time job and um, I wanted a raise. And my boss would not give it to me. I mean, I asked him three times. For, well, what happened was he kind of put a pay freeze because um, the economy wasn't doing too well and, you know, the business wasn't doing well. And so he's like, "We're, it's going to be a, a freeze. Yep. Um, so no raises. But then we started to do better. So I asked him, like, can I have a raise? He said no, like, yeah, I think two or three times. And I, at the same time, I was starting to feel very disrespected. I didn't feel like he valued me just from the way he spoke to me. And um, so I got to the point where I, I was, I had kind of a wake up call and I decided I wanted to quit. And I'm like, I don't, I don't care. I was like, I'll bartend. I mean, I just was like, I, to get to the point where you want to quit a full-time job with benefits and salary to go bartend, like, yeah. that says a lot. Like, that's, you're not in a good space. Yeah. Um, so I decided that. I didn't tell him, though, but I started working the, like, mechanics of how I was going to do it. Like, okay, I'll quit at this point after I get my boat, my, even though we weren't getting raises, we would get, like, a little bonus at Christmas every year. Um, and that mainly came from our clients giving us gifts and stuff. But in any case, I was like, I'm going to get my bonus and then I'm going to leave and I'm going to tell them I'm going to quit. At the same time, another opportunity randomly opened up for me in a different state. And I thought, oh, perfect. I'll take that opportunity. I'm going to go do that. And, um, um, and I would have gotten free room and board and a free car for this other opportunity. And I'm like, okay, this is the universe telling me, go, take it. Yeah. So I was ready to quit. Um, I even found a subletter for my apartment. And my boss goes to me, keep in mind, he doesn't know any of this is happening. Yeah. He goes, I feel like you're really unhappy here. And I really want to keep you around. So I think I'm going to give you a raise. I was like, what? I mean, I asked three times, never got it. And then somehow through law of attraction, through me starting to respect myself and realize I'm not being respected in this job. Financially, I'm not being respected. Verbally, I'm not being respected. Um, I'm just treated like a doormat. Yeah. When I got to the point of like, I'm important, self-love, which you always talk about. Yeah. Um, I'm important, I'm valuable as company. I deserve this. I love myself. I deserve better. Um, that's the moment I got the raise and I didn't even have to do anything wow. like because we all love to do stuff, but I just didn't have to do anything. And it was crazy. And so I actually ended up asking him for more than he was offering and I ended up getting it. And it just was such a crazy story. I ended up getting more than I even thought I was going to get. Wow. I ended up saying job. Um, you did. And he, you did. I'm sorry. Sorry. Did you say? I'm sorry? You did end up staying? You didn't take the other job? I ended up staying because um, with that amount of money, I was like, and he promised to not be as rude as he was before. And he apologized. He said, I'm sorry. I didn't realize. So with all that, the conditions were so much better that I didn't mind being there. Because yeah. it was, you know, 
a lot of misery that I was experiencing was lift was taken away yeah. because I was being treated better. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing is that other opportunity, it never panned out to anything. Ah. Like it turns out that company never took off the ground. So it, it's almost like that opportunity presented itself just to give me enough of a, to feel en enough, feel okay enough to quit, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it was kind of almost deceptive because maybe if that opportunity hadn't come up, I wouldn't have quit as easily. Like it almost existed just so I could get a raise. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. I mean, there was so much right. mystical, magical energy around the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and it, and it all stemmed from self-love. Yeah. I, there wasn't even, I wasn't even visualizing or anything. It was literally just me being like, I love myself. So I want something better. Yeah. Lovely. Lovely. So um, you knew about self-love then anyway. You know, I, again, it wasn't conscious. Like, I mean, yes, I knew about it, but I didn't, I didn't think about how that applied to law of attraction. Yeah. Like I didn't put those two together at yeah. all. Yeah. And it's just that I had gotten to a point in my life that I felt so low. And um, I had this kind of, I went on a vacation and had like an epiphany moment where I'm like, wait a minute. So I'm on vacation. I'm at the beach. There's no one telling me I'm a loser. There's, I'm with people that are fun. Yeah. Enjoyed being around me who made me realize like, wait a minute, people like me. Yeah. Like, people like being around me. So why am I being treated like crap at work? Yeah. It just dawned on me. Yeah. So yeah, it was more of like an epiphany where I'm like, I'm really fun mm. and I'm lovable. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> screw this. Screw this. You know, yeah. you know what? That job was like, I forget what, there's that analogy of the boiling water. Yeah. Like if you put the frog in when it's cold or a crab or whatever, and you turn the heat up, it doesn't know. Yeah. If you put it in when it's hot, it knows. I think I was like in the boiling water when I started, it was cold and it slowly turned up. So by, after a couple of years, I didn't even realize I was in this hot water. Yeah. I was so used to being talked down to and just treated like crap that I, forgot that I was miserable, but I forgot that that was, there was something else. Yeah. And I didn't realize that was why I was feeling miserable. Mm. So yeah, it was crazy. I did obviously eventually quit, but yeah, at the time it was good. So free after that. <laughs> you must. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, I got a raise. I'm like, I'm going yeah. on vacation. I'm doing, yeah. you know, X, Y, Z. I'm going shopping. I was like, Oh, I was, it was such a relief yeah to to have that um but yeah it comes back to self-love so it does it does yeah. it always does it's the same thing whether it's for a job or a relationship it's always self-love with that if you sort that out everything works everything falls into place yeah everything now it's almost like that's really the base yeah then you the other things yeah that are around on top of it but that's kind of the fundamental one. Like if you don't have that, the whole house is going to crumble. There's no foundation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is people that often have relationship trouble often have trouble at work. Not all the time, yes. but it's like your foundation of lack of self-love is echoed in both areas. Yes, exactly. And it's true because I, my lack of self-love was reflecting myself at the office because I could see that my boss, I mean, going, you always say, you talk about the things being you pushed out. This is a perfect yep. example because my boss treated everybody in the office differently. Mm. And we all treat off people differently in, in life, but it's very clear and obvious when you're in an office space and you've got your boss who clearly talks to me one way, but then wouldn't dare talk to somebody else that way. Yeah. And it got to the point where my coworkers were like, gosh, why does he talk to you like that? I feel so bad. Like, and they were jumping in and defending me. Yeah. Which then made me feel even more yeah. embarrassed yeah. that like, I can't even, I don't have the way, a way to fight back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was definitely, there was definitely a lot of pushing out of him treating me that way. Cause I didn't feel good about myself. Yeah. You know, um, 
Yeah. yeah. And so after that, after the whole race thing, he, he definitely started treating me differently. Um, yeah. And, and he stayed like that for a long, long time. Um, there were times where we would still have our moments. Yeah. And I would have to remember to kind of like stay strong and not back down. Yeah. But he was mostly better. Um, but yeah, at that time, the self-love was reflecting in my relationships as well. Mm -hmm and the men I was attracting and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Friendships too. I mean, everything. Yeah. It, yeah. Health, money, job, relationships. It, it, it echoes everywhere. It echoes yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And yeah even Good lesson. Good lesson. Once you know, then you're not trying to put out fires. You, if you fix the foundation, right. And also fires put themselves out. That's a great way to, to put it. Though they do put themselves out. They don't. Yeah. 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 yeah I had a um, my roommate in college had uh, anorexia, and um, so she had a lot of uh, self love issues or lack lack of self love. Yeah. Um, but like on a level that I had not even experienced before, um, and it wasn't just self love. It was a lot of negativity and a lot of. Um, you know, she kind of felt like the world was out to get her a little bit. Yeah. And the craziest things would happen to her. Like, wherever we go, people, we'd go to the mall. She would not even open her mouth and people would be rude to her. Like, they just would automatically be rude and they would turn to me and be, like, really nice. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, what, what's happening? Yeah. I mean, it was everywhere we went. Wow. Um, I mean, even, like, she got her car towed um, randomly in the middle of the night. They had to move my car to tow her car because I was parked behind her. I don't know why. Like, they just decided to tow her car, and they put my car back in its spot and then just took her car and towed it away. I mean, nutty things like that would happen to her all the time. Yeah. And I remember thinking, like, you know what? There's something going on here. Yeah. It, I ha It's like a... Um, like I kind of learned a lot about law of attraction from just life and not just the secret. The yeah. secret just made it like codified where I'm like, Oh, that's like, now it's written down. It's a word, but seeing all these things, it was like a lesson firsthand. Where I'm like, Oh, this is happening. Cause she's putting out a lot of negative energy Yeah, and it's coming back at her. And it's, it's crazy to watch it in real time happen. It is. It is. And I think yeah. too, with, with anorexia, it's such a, um, self-hatred mm -hmm. it's a self-hatred and if you have self-hatred boy oh boy walking out into the world with that you're gonna cop so much stuff where like you say people just it just comes at you you don't even need to open your mouth because your self-hatred just brings in nasty stuff yeah yeah i mean it was it was constant i found it hard to be around her after a certain point because yeah i'm like i i don't know what way you have to wrap off on me like yeah. i'm not i may have my issues but mine are not on that level yeah um i mean i felt bad for her and i wanted her to change it but um yeah yeah it was it was hard um but yeah i mean you, you need to put out like a positive energy like all all the time if you yeah. want to, to yeah. get things things back to you and like it's fun, even on a small level, on a day-to-day -day basis. It doesn't have to be, oh, manifesting the car, manifesting the career, manifesting the guy or the girl. Yeah. Sometimes just little things. Like, I to go back to me manifesting stuff for free, I was at a bar the other night, and I just really didn't want to buy another glass of wine. <laughs> and I was saying in my head, like, I really want the bartender to just give me one. Yeah. And... So I just kind of casually said to him, oh, do you, do you have like a half glass of wine? And like, instead of a full, and he goes, no, we don't offer that. And I was like, okay. And then he, he goes, he comes with a bottle of the, the wine I had already had before. And he just pours a full glass and walks away. <laughs> I, was, I looked at my friend like, wait, did that just happen? I mean, and she was she was bugging out too because I, I kind of had said like, I really just want him to give it to me. 
And then he did. And she's like, whoa. You have to keep the powers. I'm like, no, I'm like, you can do it too. Um, yeah, you can. You can. You yeah. just got to dare to, to think it. Yeah. And yeah. you just got to think it. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, it's fun. And the thing is, like, those kind of little ones are fun and they keep me kind of going on, like, a. Yep. You know, as you're waiting for maybe, like, the bigger things to happen or whatever. It's yeah. nice to get the little ones to go, okay, I'm obviously doing something right. Yeah. There, there's some vibe I'm giving off that's correct. So, yes. That, that keeps me grounded. I'm like, all right, I, I can keep doing this, I can get better at this. Yeah, yeah. That's a good one. That's yeah. Good. It's fun to play around with it. Oh yeah, it's it's so fun. I actually started making a little in my journal, like just list of all the funny weird things that pop up that that um are just are like law of attraction signs or manifestations yeah. or e even if it's like the smallest thing, because it's the more I the more you do it, the more you acknowledge it, I feel like the more it's gonna happen. Yep, because you're focused on it and you're having fun with it and you're playing with it and you're, you know, just making it a game. This is what Florence Scoville Shin called the game of life. This is it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, yeah, it just makes everything so much more fun. Yeah. When does. you're constantly, uh, you know, things are coming in your life and you're like, oh, yeah. I manifested that. Oh, I manifested yeah. that. Um, it's like, oh my God, it just made me think of a really funny one I did a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> kind of embarrassing, but it's a little bit of a tangent, but I, I wanted like at this one point, I wanted a specific looking guy. Yeah. And so I cut out all these pictures of celebrities with like black hair and blue eyes. Yeah. And I, and, and tattoos. That was my other thing. Yeah. So it's a very specific look. And I made like a little small mini vision board of all these celebrities and I stuck it on my wall. I went out one night and I meet this guy. He has black hair and blue eyes and he's covered in tattoos. And yeah. he starts talking to me. He's, and I'm thinking, oh my God, this guy's like so hot. Like this is what I envisioned and whatever. <laughs> well, <laughs> he ends up coming home with me and I forgot the vision board was up. Like completely forgot <laughs> And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Like praying that he would like, I have to go to the bathroom or something and I'm like yeah. oh it takes him a while he finally noticed and he goes oh <laughs> he's like he's like that's weird and I was like I had to really try to backpedal out of that one and um I was like well you're weird because he had he had said like some crazy things that night he was like I love you and I'm like I just met you you don't love me yeah but so I was like no you're weird but um Oh my God, it was so funny. I mean, it was never anyone who would turn into anything serious anyway. So I, it wasn't like I was terribly devastated. Yeah. But it was just funny when he looked at it and he probably realized that he looked like the people on the board. Wow. <laughs> oh my God. Remember to hide your vision board. <laughs> if you have people coming over and you don't want them to see it. <laughs> oh my God. So oh, funny. But it is that specific, isn't it? Like it really is it can be that specific. Yeah, I mean, it worked. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, I was traveling from, um, from, where was I? Sydney to London this time. And um, I was, I had to, when you go through customs, they always make you get rid of water bottles. And I thought, damn, I just filled up that water bottle or I just bought one or whatever. And I thought, I'm getting a free water bottle because I just paid for that and I've had to throw it in the bin. And I just said that to myself with that adamant, I'm going to have a free water bottle. Anyway, I go through customs, totally forget about it. I'm looking through the shops. And um, then there's, there's this water bottle. Literally, I, I nearly sat on top of it. A brand new water bottle sealed, not someone had opened it and put the cap back on brand new designer one I would never have bought water bottle and it was literally nearly under my bum when I said oh <laughs> and that's I thought crazy. of course <laughs> oh, yeah, that's so I just said thank you <laughs> that is hilarious yeah and it just happens you know like that I remember once I wanted I I had 
I wanted a loaf of bread and I wanted this particular brand and I ended up, I was catching the train to and from work and I, like I had my staff, people were sitting down, you know, busy city, people getting up, sitting down and all this stuff. Anyway, I turned around and literally right next to me, I don't know how I didn't see it when I first got there. Maybe the person that was sitting next to me got up and left it. I don't know the details because it's always a bit busy when you're getting it on and off trains. There was the loaf of bread with the same brand tied up, never been opened, the exact loaf of bread I wanted. And I was thinking, I don't have time to stop. I'm too tired. I don't want to stop at the shop. I don't want to go to any shop. I just really want that loaf of bread. And I, I wasn't actually thinking of doing it to manifest. I was just thinking to myself silently, there was the loaf of bread. That's amazing. Yeah. So it does yeah. happen, you know, it does happen. And I remember once too, I was in London and I'd gone to Primark, which is like a department store. I'd bought myself this long sleeve t-shirt in a, I think it was white and navy blue stripe. And I thought, oh, I wish they had this in another color. Anyway, they didn't when I went to that shop. The next day I went for a walk and hang, I, I do like this hour walk. I used to do it all the time. No word of a lie. That exact t-shirt with white and gray stripes was hanging on a fence in my size. Oh my God, not fence. Hanging on a fence, brand new with a tag. Hanging on the fence. It's like someone had either. That is crazy. That was crazy. It was hanging on the fence and I'm walking past and I looked at it and I went, there was no one around. And I thought, well, that's my shirt. There it is. <laughs> yeah, clearly. I mean, yeah. that's, that's almost like, I love those because it's so random that you think. So random. Yeah. You know, the universe. Yep. Was involved because why is it hanging on a fence? And why is it my size in and right. when I just mentioned it yesterday and they'd run out of other sizes and colors at this, at this right. department store. So it was just like, what? that one was a good one. Cause I just thought, wow, you just, all of a sudden you have that moment where you go, I'm heard. They hear me. Yeah. They hear me. Yeah. You're like, they're listening. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, remarkable when you start to see the evidence of your random thoughts creating something out of thin air and dropping it in your lap like that right yeah it's it's a great way to um get confidence as we were saying yeah. before yeah in your manifestations because i mean like a lot of people when i'm trying to manifest something i'm like there's a sign am i doing it uh, and then i just realized there's the, i've never had any signs up until it happened, it yeah. just happened. Yeah. So there's, um, so I kind of had to go, you know, I need to stop looking for the signs and just, cause looking for the signs means you don't trust that it's going to happen. So you're putting out that vibe. So yeah. you need to trust that it's going to happen. Yep. And, and if you really have a hard time with that, sometimes I'll say, I trust that it's going to happen or that the universe is going to provide me something even better. Yeah. Um, one or the other. Yeah. So either way, you're going to get something you want, but you have yeah. to put away any doubt because the moment you have that doubt and the, it just, it all goes to yeah. hell to hand back. Yeah. And um, I think the more times you have moments where you do manifest these random things, your yeah. confidence just grows over time. Yeah. The next time you launch something, you just know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it almost starts to feel like, Sometimes I'm like, I'm like, am I Samantha from Bewitch? Like, am I? <laughs> I like, I feel like, you know, I have fairy dust sometimes. Like, yeah. you know, it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of crazy. I mean, yeah. And I, and like, I went hiking the other day and I, um, I just simply, like, I just, all I said was, um, I didn't want to see a snake. And I said it, I don't know why I said that. I've gone hiking a million times. I go like, you know, twice a month usually. Yeah. And I don't think I ever think about snakes. I mean, I know they're there, but I don't really think about them. Yeah. Um, and for some reason this day, I don't know what it was, but I just thought to myself, I hope I don't see a snake. So we're hiking and hiking. All of a sudden my friend screams and I turn around, I'm like, what? And she's like, a snake just went underneath your feet. 
And I was like, oh. and then I thought, oh my God, because I was thinking I didn't want to see a snake. And she's like, well, you didn't see it. She's yeah. like, I saw it. It went through your feet. And I was like, oh my God. I mean, if I had said, I don't want to even encounter one or don't want to be around me, but I specifically said, I don't want to see one. Yeah. And the, you know, for a snake to go through your feet at the exact time that you're stepping through. Yeah. And you not to see it. Yeah. It's like a fraction. Like, can I just yeah. stop, gone a little bit slower? I probably would have seen it. Mm. And I probably would have screamed my head off. So. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, it's a funny one. I'm like, yeah, the universe does look out for you. But you know, in The Secret, where they, they had that particular um, part in The Secret movie where they show if you yell yes at something, it comes towards you. And if you say no towards something, it comes towards you because it's a focus-based universe. And that's right. an, an example of, you said, I don't want to see a snake. So the universe goes snake, 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 bang. You didn't see it, right. but it still came into your existence at that time. So, Right. It's funny. It's almost like sometimes I'm like, oh, that's like a joke, right? Because it's yeah. like, yeah, I didn't see it, but it was there. So yes, yeah. yeah. um, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, that's fine. I'll take it as long as I didn't see it. It yeah. just was. It's, it's more proof to me that I'm in. Yeah, I'm in the right flow. I'm getting in the right flow. Yeah, and things are gonna work out fine. Yeah, you know. And if I have a day where I feel like, oh, something's really out of whack here, like things are going off, I'll just. I'll go outside. That's when I'll like go for a walk or um, I do yoga. So I do that or, but there was a moment I just like the other day I was like, wow, everything's kind of going wrong for some reason. I'm like, I need to stop. Yeah. I'm going to go ride my bike. Yes. And I am going to read a book. Yeah. I'm going to come back to this later. Yes. Because I clearly was putting out some bad, some something putting out some negative something so um yeah it unhooks you from it for a while yeah and i think probably some of it was that i was just like pretty grumpy a few weeks ago and i think because there was a lot of things that were there were orders that had gone wrong so they had actually been shipped a couple weeks ago so and at that point i was really like grumpy about something so it's kind of i think it was a manifestation of that so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I was like, you know, I'm fixing this. I'm not gonna let it get me down. Yep. Things happen in a business. Things happen in life. Yep. They just do. Cars break down. You get bills. Somebody yep. gets sick. You break up. Like, yeah. It's life. See, so there's no need to say why me. I mean. Yeah. It happens <laughs> everywhere. So. And look at so. how great your breakup ended up with your post-it notes, and it started your business. <laughs> I know exactly. So even exactly. when it like lemons, like you made the best lemonade out of that. I know. I, I sure did. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like that. I love that story because I feel like that's actually maybe even going to fuel it to go further because um, yeah. every time people hear it, they're like, that's funny. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, this would be a good, like, uh, like for PR reasons. I'm like, this is a good PR angle because it's really sure. ridiculous. Because it's yeah. so interesting and unique. Like, it really is. Yeah. I know. I mean, I should do an ad for Post-its. They should just yeah. call me up. And be like, Can you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's probably so Actually, funny. That might be a, a good um, email to send. I should. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to my story. Yeah. Have I got a store, Post-it story, Post-it note story for you? <laughs> Absolutely, that would be hilarious. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Oh my God. Yeah, I definitely turning lemons into lemonade. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was a good one. That was a really good one. I still yeah. can't believe you haven't told your ex that that's what's come out of it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I mean, and yeah, that is kind of funny because we didn't have the best breakup. I mean, clearly, he broke up with me on a post it note. So yeah. I. We were, we talked a little bit after that, but it was always a bit acrimonious. Yeah. And then after we were done, done talking, that's when I started a few months later. Yeah. And at that point I just thought, by the time it became successful, it had already been like, I want to say almost a, a year 
after we broke up. So yeah, I was like, I wanted to, but I was like, I can't reach out to him because I can't stand him. And it's just, and it's like, I just, you know, I just felt like, I hope he's like Googled me at some point and figured it out. But, yeah. um, yeah, it'll be better if he finds out from someone else. Oh yeah. 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 If it had ended more amicably, yeah. I probably would have. But um Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't very nice at the oh, end. So. No. Yeah. No, um, ending a relationship on a post-it note isn't very nice. No, that's the thing. I mean that's it's not <laughs> No, especially when it's someone who like literally was like, I wanna marry you. Yeah, it's <laughs> Yeah. So no, he was a little bit um he didn't really have a lot of self love either. So Yeah, yeah. Wasn't that. Yeah. yeah. So Oh, brilliant. Well, yeah. it's good catching up with you, Rachel. I can't believe we've been talking for an hour. This, it goes so quick when you start talking about Has it. Has been an hour already? Yeah. Oh. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. It's good. It's good. That's when you know you do a good interview is when it goes that quick. Yeah, I thought it'd been like 20 minutes. I know. I know. That's it's that's the thing that's when you know you'd, you're in the right place doing the right thing when it goes really fast <laughs> yeah that's true that's true well we will put uh any we'll put the youtube link to your new channel we'll put if you want me to put any i'll, I'll put the other links that we put in the last youtube down below yeah i'll, yeah. I'll email them to you yeah okay great Great. And if you want to do what you did before, answer some questions in the thread. It's just so good to, yeah, talk to the viewers that are doing interesting things. And for me, creative businesses is always a big passion of mine. I love yeah. it. And the yeah. fact that you're free from an alarm clock, free from a boss, and you're free from the ceiling of what you can earn from a job, you know, all those things yeah. have been broken. So, yeah. That's so exciting to me. And I, I love that we're born at a time where the internet is available for us to use, to expand and to do really well. Yeah. I mean, this, I mean, I think of all the people that work from home these days doing their own thing. It, it couldn't have happened 50 years ago. Nope. I mean, it couldn't have even happened. I don't know, 20, 30 years ago. No, exactly right. I mean, I think my mom and dad wouldn't have been able to do this. So we were born at the right time where we, can be free you know we can be free yeah so yeah it's a it's a great feeling it is it yeah. is it is it is well thanks for spending some time with us and sharing bits and pieces because it's always nice to get an update from people and where they're up to and and yeah. share a bit more about manifesting and the journey that got you there i think that's always a good conversation so thank you rachel yeah. thanks for having me pleasure we'll all sign off here and then I'll come, I'll just stop the recording so we can have a chat. Okay. Sounds good. Bye everybody.